news made by the one and only Liz Nugent with her creature collection. Uh, you know, the, her, her run of, of tokens, uh, tokens and sleeves has been one of my favorites uh, thus far. Uh, the penguin one's specifically cool because uh, they get to fly. They have jetpacks. So nothing that, like a jetpack on a penguin. Yeah, nothing like a jet. I mean, that's just that's just awesome, you know. But uh, this junk token deck does look pretty sweet, uh, even though it's two junk decks fighting against each other. Very different. Uh, so uh, yeah, a couple more cards from uh, Robert Timonax deck. Uh, he does have three Putrefy, uh, three Garrick Primal Hunter, three Soren, four Thrag Tusk, uh, Lingering Souls, Smiter, Farseek, Voice of Resurgence, and Arbor Elf. Uh, no Avizens Pilgrim, which seems a little out of place. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's like a green based deck, I guess, and uh, being able to untap, uh, you know, the overgrown tombs and stuff may be uh, important, but the lack of Absence Pilgrim does feel a little bit weird. Yeah, especially in uh, a junk deck. Yeah, a junk deck with Luxon Smiter and Lingering Souls, where all you want to do is cast, uh, you know, your creatures on, on, you know, your big three drops on turn two. Uh, I feel like Farseek may should just be more, or more Absence Pilgrims or Man Accelerators. Uh, but, you know, Evan, uh, this is the deck I build. It's four Ivesis Pilgrim, four Arbor Elf, a couple Sin Collectors, three Fiend Hunters. The main deck is the exact same from uh, Chris Van Meter's deck uh, from the uh, Open last weekend. Uh, the, the, the thing that Evan's trying to ponder, he has a one land, an Absence Pilgrim, but he has a Mulch. So if his Absence Pilgrim dies or, uh, you know, he just bricks on lands or whatever, he's not going to be able to cast Mulch. Or if he just whiffs on Mulch, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. So he's really taking a, a minute to, to figure out whether or not he's going to keep this hand. Right. Uh, I, I think he should, especially on the play. On, on the draw, it's, it's a little more sketchy, but on the play... It's hard for your opponent to have both an untapped land and a one mana spell right. to kill your creature. All right, so we're going to take two here, cast this uh, Avacis Pilgrim, cross our fingers, or hope we draw a land. Either way, I'm fine with that. All right, as it looks like uh, there aren't any ways for uh, Robert to kill the Avacis Pilgrim, so uh, Evan should be okay. Uh, we're going to take two from the Overgrown Tomb and play the Arbor Elf. All right, so Robert matches Evan's start. Yep. Oh, no, I sure do wish I hope. Hit lands on this mulch. <laughs> well, he hit a four, so I guess he doesn't need to. Uh, yeah. Look, man, you can't make fun of Evan. Only I can make fun of him. Oh. He, he's my boss, and he's on camera for me to make fun of. Okay, you can do what you want. That's <laughs> fine. All right, so he has two lands on the mulch one, which is a temple garden, which is awesome. Uh, so now, even if his Avacis Pilgrim dies, he still has access to white mana. Uh, hopefully, over the next couple turns, he'll be able to start landing some of his better spells. Uh, maybe Acidic Slime or Thrag Tusk to uh, put some pressure on the board as well as gain some uh, minute advantages. Yeah, and he does bend two Restoration Angels, not really what he wants to have in the graveyard. Uh, except but... that he has uh, Unknown Barrel Rice in hand, and yeah. if he plays his Thrag Tusk, then he can just chain Restoration Angels for consecutive turns and really, uh, you know, build a board presence against Robert's token deck while also gaining life to prevent a racing scenario. So turn two Lingering Souls from Robert to put some, uh, you know, pressure on the board, maybe tick down Evan's life a little bit. Uh, but like we said, he does not have access to Intangible Virtue, uh, but he does have Soren to make those Lingering Souls into real monsters. Right, and you know, really Lingering Souls, it's such a powerful card, it doesn't need Intangible Virtue. You don't need to clog your deck up with this if you don't want to. Right. That just means you might have to take out a few of the other token cards. Right. So, I mean, we've seen versions that played... Uh, Call the Conclave already and things like that. Just ways to generate tokens constantly so that your intangible virtues do get more and more powerful. Um, Evan here uh, passes the turn with access to three mana. He's either going to Grizzly Salvage or he just has a bunch of like bigger spells in hand. It looks like his hand is Grizzly Salvage, uh, a and couple of rights. Yeah, a Barrel sure. Rights, a couple of gold cards. I can't see what the other one is, but uh, and I know he has a Thrag Tusk for sure. So Robert decides to take two from his Overgrown Tomb, probably to cast Advent of the Worm, uh, which I saw in his hand, but instead opts for a Soren, which is going to do what we said and pump those Lingering Souls tokens, or maybe just make a, a Vampire, but he makes an Emblem. Interesting. I'm a little surprised he didn't make a Vampire here, just because of the Avacyn's Pilgrim. Um, well, he doesn't have to attack with both of the things, and if uh, he chooses to hold them back, you know, uh, he's going to be able to protect his Soren, which will, you know potentially generate a bunch of two ones which would be sweet uh and then you know he doesn't want to just give up a soren if he if he you know it's not like evan has that much removal in his deck uh to to really punish him for only leaving back one guy so he can still attack for two uh and even if soren ends up dying he has something to do uh later on 
allow. So Grizzly Salvage at the end of the turn. He almost untapped, but he got the Salvage off first. And there's an Unburial Rites. Two of them. That'll be good. Is, is this good? <laughs> he was really hoping to hit something like Angel Serenity, I think, though, since he does have the two Unburial Rites in hand already. Or just, sorry, just the one Unburial Rites in hand. Uh, he decides to take a Sun Petal Grove, which gives him access to three potential white later in the game for uh, Angel of Serenity, along with the Avacyn's Pilgrim. Yeah, you know, it's it's pretty interesting. The original Mulch Grizzly Salvage reanimation decks, they played a lot of big fatties like Elish Norn. That was what they are really hoping to hit. And yeah. it was really more of a, a reanimator deck. This incarnation is just a value deck. If yeah. It, if it doesn't hit the Angels, no big deal. It can cast them later. Yeah, and the, the one of the coolest things about Restoration Angel... Uh, in the deck is that you have so many cards to interact with it now, whereas before uh, it wasn't that impressive, in my opinion. Um, you know, Restoration Angel had like Thrag Tusk and Acidic Slime as their only targets, and for a long time all it had was Thrag Tusk as its main target. And now we have uh, main deck Fiend Hunters, we have uh, Sin Collector, as well as the Thrag Tusk and uh, Acidic Slimes, which means that we want to play more Restoration Angels. Not only is it a great uh, you know, power and toughness on a flyer at flash speed, but it generates a lot of value with its come to play effect. Right. So Evan Irwin dropping a Thrag Tusk, uh, going up to 21, and hoping to put some pressure on that Soren, or at, at least yeah. drops life to him. It's going to be pretty hard without Angel of Serenity, since he's going to have a Vampire token here after the activation, as well as the potential flashback from Lingering Souls, and I know for a fact he has Advent of the Worm in hand. It doesn't look like he has another land to play a Garrick Primal Hunter, uh, but he does have a lot of gas to play with here. Uh, a second Lingering Souls in hand. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like he's going to battle for uh, four damage, putting him to 17. And he can follow it up with uh, a multitude of effects. We'll see what he chooses to do. Uh, it's pro It's got to involve Lingering Souls well, somewhere. Uh, wow. So, he, so since he has the blocker on the ground, he's just going to put Advent of the Worm into play and hopefully apply more pressure. Um, actually, I don't think it's, it's that good, though, but... Uh, his his reasoning could be that the Restoration Angel is going to brick wall his flyers uh, for the foreseeable future, and the fact that there are two angels in the yard along with two Umbararites, uh, it's going to make that Thrag Tusk, you know, a little uh, a little awkward. If you know, like, but maybe that means that playing Advent of the Worm is not that good either. So, yeah, it's kind of an interesting scenario. This this board, uh, it can be gummed up pretty easily if Evan wants it to. Yeah. I mean, if either player wants it to, honestly, because, yeah. you know, Robert, if he feels like he needs to be on the defensive at some point, uh, you know, he has the ability to just generate a, a bunch of blockers, uh, really, you know, put put the claws into Evan, you know. Yeah. Oh, wow. Is this is this an advent to block, then? Um, I mean, possibly. Uh, he might just want to get the Thragtus off the table so that he can't Restoration Angel to have a flying blocker and to be able to get value out of the Thragtus. Right. And since he has so much gas on backup in hand, uh, he just wants to like get the Thragtus out of play so the Restoration Angel doesn't end up being a major problem as opposed to just a gigantic speed bump. Yeah, and there's the Worm Token. Evan lets it resolve. Does he have an Angel in hand? Uh, it doesn't look like it. I think he's just got a uh, Sin Collector, a Barrow Rites, looks like Acidic Slime, maybe a Grizzly Salvage, and a Woodland Cemetery, if I'm not mistaken. So he's gonna he's fine with his laying this trade. Um, he could slime Robert off of his only white mana uh, with the Sun Petal Grove, which I think is the right play, because then after that, he can start chaining Restoration Angel on Acidic Slime and just knock Robert completely out of the game by taking out all of his mana sources. Right, and it won't really matter if Robert has the Soren if he Did has he multiple Did he target the Overroom, too? Wow, weird. What Come is on, he trying buddy. to keep him off double black for? I don't know, man. Maybe he just wants to kill all the forest so it turns off the Arbor Elf, too, which is, uh, you know... A reasonable play, although I think cutting him off of white is much more important at this juncture, uh, since you know he could have access to like more lingering souls and things like that. Um, but just usually, it's it's the better play to just knock somebody off of uh, a certain color. Yeah, definitely. And wow, Robert just uh, bins his sword to emblem, yeah, cashing it in for uh, another emblem. I guess he he realizes that he's going to be in a little bit of trouble here against uh, Evan's Acidic Slime with the two Restoration Angels in the yard with the Umbararites, so he knows he wants to just put as much flying power into play as possible. Uh, it's likely he's just going to hard cast the Lingering Souls from hand, uh, start you know getting in the 3-1 Flying Beats. Oh, yeah. That's not a bad attack, too. The Vampire has lifelink, and if Evan wants to trade, he's more than happy you know, taking care of you know, the Beast Token or the Acidic Slime, but he also just wants to try to get as much damage as possible, and he's still going to gain a bunch of life regardless of what happens. Right. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Avacyn's Pilgrim trade here over the Beast. Uh, 
it's it's going to be hard for Evan to cast more than one spell in a turn. Well, once he gets right eight now. mana, he definitely can do that. And I mean, maybe you're right, but it's not like he's going to win this race because of uh, all these lingering souls in the yard that can just trade off with the beast if they want to. Um, and the mana might be valuable later. And it's also his third white source, I think, for uh, an eight and jewel serenity off the top. Okay. And I think that that's yeah. that might be the the more important aspect. That's a good point. And Evan here actually going to get a little bit of uh, justice on his target for acidic slime because. Uh, Robert's got another Arbor Elf, and now Evan can put a Restoration Angel into play, uh, prevent some damage, but he's going to take nine of it down to uh, two, uh, and, you know, be in pretty bad shape unless he draws another Thrag Tusk, or uh, I guess he can always unbearerize the other Thrag Tusk, but it's hard to put a Restoration Angel into play at the same time. Yeah, it is, but he here's the first Unburial on the Resto. Yep, and that's going to... Well, we probably should have attacked for two first, but it's fine. Oh, no, he could have traded off with the Arbor Elf if he wanted to, so maybe that was a little bit better. Evan just showing me up. <laughs> uh, Blink in the slime yeah. so you don't have to. <laughs> here it is. That's then. pretty good. Here comes, so, oh, sin collector. Here comes a Sin Collector. Okay. I don't like this play that much. I mean, sure, it takes care of this Lingering Souls, but unless uh, Robert was able to draw a forest, it's unlikely he was going to be able to cast it anytime soon. Um, what he could have done was Grizzly Salvage instead and try to hit uh, an Angel of Serenity or something like that. But then again, he can always Grizzly Salvage next turn for Angel of Serenity, although he couldn't cast the Angel of Serenity if he wanted to put it into his hand. So now he's just locked in on Umbarrowrighting the Angel of Serenity should he hit one off of the Grizzly Salvage, which he desperately needs to. Right, and Isolated Chapel for Robert both comes into play tap and does not get untapped by Arbor Elf, so yep. still stuck on two here. Well, stuck on one stuck for, on for this turn, turn. Yeah. yeah. So not able to uh, do much of anything. I think he's just going to play land, attack for a bunch in the air. He's going to get one of his guys eaten. Evan's going to go to two. Um, what, what's interesting to note is that Evan, if he misses on his Grizzly Salvage next turn, can still unbear rights on the Thrag Tusk, uh, and that'll put him to seven. Uh, he can block one of the tokens with a Restoration Angel and take six damage down to one. Right. Wow, the Arbor Elf's turning sideways too. Yeah, I would definitely just put both my Acidic Slime and my Sin Collector in front of those just to make sure we don't die. Yeah, he's he's already going to two here. He can't leave any yep. creature unblocked. No man left behind. Yep, that's right. So the board now, Robert has one land and three 3-1 three Lingering Souls tokens versus Evan Irwin's seven mana, one of which is an Elf, and the rest though. Yeah, I believe he still has a... Uh, Woodland Cemetery in hand as well, okay. so he can still potentially trade off the Arbor Elf if he needs to. Oh, is that an Angel Serenity? I think it just oh, might have been. Fatty Boom Booms. Look at that, getting bailed out by the deck. Evan Irwin yeah. gets rid of the three flyers. And well, you know what they say, better lucky than good, and this it. is definitely <laughs> one of those points. Evan to Irwin, be, perfect example, yeah. better lucky than good. Yeah. There we go. To be fair, he could have had a, you know another look at the top five for a redraw with yeah. the Grizzly Salvage, so... Definitely not in a bad spot, but uh, Robert here going to take two, going down to 13. Probably going to cast another Lingering Souls, but at this point I think Evan's just going to be able to start chaining on Barrow Rights on both Restoration Angel and Thrag Tusk and just put the game away. Right. He's going to be able to get a Thrag Tusk, go up to a healthy seven, and force Robert to chump lock in only a couple of turns. Yep. Uh, right here, uh, he's potentially attacking for eight, which will put Robert to five, and then he can just uh, put the Thrag Tusk into play, go up to seven. He can afford to take one hit from it, uh, but instead he's going to use Salvage to try to dig for another Angel of Serenity to Unbearer Rights back. Right, to just put the game away yeah, right Yeah, and that'll, that'll lock it up. Well, that's a Thrag Tusk. Okay. Not terrible. Not so bad. It's possible he wants to hold back the Restoration Angel just for max prevent purposes, um, you know, if uh, Robert really wants to get rid of the Angel Serenity, he'd have to double block it, but then it's just going to get on bearer rights, and things are just going to get worse from there. Uh, Evan really just doesn't want to die to any sort of intangible virtue type effect, which I think uh, attacking with the Restoration Angel would ultimately, uh, you know, involve. Yeah, attacking with the Resto would definitely be a punt here. Even though Robert doesn't have the virtue in his deck, has no real way to punish Evan, uh, it's still not worth it. Oof. And a little risky here. If you're going to attack there, though, I think you also attack with Avacyn's Pilgrim. You're more than happy to trade it for a guy, and you're not using the mana this turn. Right. Um, yeah, but, you know, Evan's at 7. Robert decides to take it. And, yeah, I mean, Let's Evan, see. you know, might have been a little aggressive here. And now if uh, he drew a land, so if he has another Soren, that's uh, the He game. has a Tusk and a uh, 
a Garrick right, stuck yeah. in hand. Yeah. Those acidic slimes were pretty backbreaking, but he still has the flashback on Lingering Souls here. Um, you know, and he can block, uh, you know, some of the creatures to not die. Like he can block the Thrag Tusk, block the Angel Serenity, take three damage from the Angel's uh, Restoration Angel, go to two, and still have two big flyers. So Evan, uh, you know, he's going to be taking six down to one, and a Thrag Tusk coming back is not going to do it. He's going to have to probably Restoration Angel before attacks on the Thrag Tusk. Otherwise, uh, you know, he's going to lose his Thrag Tusk and not be able to gain that life back. Yeah, I, I think I don't think Robert can attack at all. I think he can attack with one token. No, no, if, no, no, it, no it if he attacks two. with both, no, yeah. he can attack with both and then block two. Tusk and Serenity, taking four down to one. Yeah. And I think that puts him in the best position to potentially win the game. Yeah, Evan not not actually doesn't have it locked up quite yet. No, I mean, I actually think that his his attack last turn actually could have opened him up to a variety of cards to, to, to just die. Yeah. And, uh, you know, maybe that's something he wasn't thinking about. Like I said, he was getting very aggressive with his attacks. If he had held back the Restoration Angel, I don't think there was any possible way he could have lost the game. Um, now he's in a situation where if he attacks incorrectly or sequences his plays incorrectly, he could very easily just give the game to Robert. Yeah, it's just one lucky top deck away from Robert. Yep, right, so battle in for six. Evan's going to go to one. Let's just peel Angel Serenity and put it away. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm, I'm not going to not laugh when you do that, so just keep, keep doing it. Good deal. Oh. So, okay, that's a Restoration Angel. That one ain't bad. So now he can actually Restoration Angel and flashback an Umbera Rites and get two triggers from a Thrag Tusk. So, yeah, and put it absolutely out of reach. Yeah, that attack... Yeah. Come on, let's let's think this through for just a moment. You don't have to think for long. All right. All right. Eh. Okay, so four, five. So he can attack with Abyssin's Pilgrim and still be able to play two spells. So, all right, so this is a sequence that I expected. Uh, I'm okay with the Tusk dying because he can unbear rights at first, but he opts to just uh, play it safe, and he's just going to gain 10 life, make a bunch of beasts, and really put uh, Robert on the back foot. That right. was a, a pretty good top deck from uh, Evan. Yep, so Evan Irwin up to six, Robert down to two. Evan has to play another spell, though, because as it stands right now, he's still dead on board. Yeah, I mean, he uh, he definitely needs to have Barrow Rites uh, and the uh, other Restoration Angel to blink the Thraktos to go to 11 and, uh, you know, put himself out of range of death by flyers. Right. Or just another Thraktos. That's going to work, too. That's fine. It's good enough. <laughs> so Evan up to 11, and Robert Temenak drawing dead. Yeah, I don't think he has an out, so... Pretty good sequence uh, of turns by Evan. You know, maybe it didn't take, like, the best line possible, but there's so many different things you can do with the deck, uh, so many different lines you can take that it's hard to figure out exactly which one's the best. Um, I know Evan hasn't played that much Magic recently, too, so, I mean, he knows how all the cards work and how they interact, but just, like, being able to see that one avenue that's the best, I think, is something that, uh, you know, a more seasoned uh, player would do, but, you know, Evan's still pulling out the game because his deck is very powerful and, you know, uh, just, like, a good sequence of plays, even though it wasn't, like, the perfect one, it was still good enough. Yeah, Junkrite is just such a powerful deck, and so often it has all these lines with Grizzly Salvage and Mulch and Unburial Rites and Acidic Slime and Restoration Angels. You have so many options, and, you know, it's it's so easy to get sloppy when you're winning. It's, it's well, he wasn't really winning a lot of that game, so... <laughs> true, true. Uh, I mean, you know, it's, it, it's one thing to be sloppy when, you know, you play a lot and then you get lazy, but like I said, Evan, you know, he, he works a ton. You know, he puts in a lot of effort at Star City Games, and uh, not going to talk bad about his mistakes. Not only because he's my boss, but, <laughs> but also because, yeah, I mean, that's just, I mean, the, those things just happen when you don't play a lot of Magic. You don't really see a whole lot of the interactions. Maybe even, like, count your mana, right? Like, he just didn't attack a couple turns in a row with an Absence Pilgrim when that damage could have mattered a lot, uh, you know, in uh, future turns when trying to Alpha Strike, and then that makes the blocks worse for Robert. And, you know, he was uh, so focused on that mana mattering in the early part of the game that when later in the game when it didn't matter he wasn't able to really put it together and and you know with more play I think Evan is a good enough player where he could eventually uh, get to the point but he just you know he, he, he works hard he yeah, just wanted to come have fun this weekend and I'm glad he's doing well 4-1 still in 
great shape to make top eight, especially up a game here. With your deck too? Yeah, well, uh, it's more of BBD's deck, so I'm not gonna. I'm not taking credit. I just put it together. <laughs> I physically built it. I didn't actually build it. Build it. It's it's your physical deck though. Those yes. are your cards that he's yeah. playing. So maybe if he wins this tournament, he you can sign some of them magic. for you. Dude, maybe he'll give me a raise if he wins this <laughs> tournament. <laughs> Prize split? No. No, no. That ain't me. Yeah. So I want, I'm, I'm going for the long game. <laughs> we don't want no short term investment. So, okay, let's go over some sideboarding real quick while they're still shuffling up. Looks like they're still sideboarding. But, uh, so I think Evan might side an Abrupt Decay just because he thinks that uh, Robert's a token based deck. Maybe he has Intangible Virtue and that's just a card that's good against him. But unfortunately, it's not very good. Uh, and that's like a common thing that happens with sideboarding is that you end up diluting your deck in for fear of other cards. Right. And so he might, you know, make his reanimator strategy a little worse by bringing in something like Abrupt Decay for fear of Intangible Virtue because that, along with uh, Lingering Souls, is just incredibly hard to deal to deal with. Uh, he also has uh, Sever the Bloodline, which is going to be very good. Um, he's probably going to be cutting some Sin Collectors. Right. Now, Robert, on the other hand, he has zero ways to interact with his opponent's graveyard. He has no ground seals. He has no move cotton. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, he's he's 4-1, though, so he's managed to either dodge or beat Junk Reanimator yeah. so far. I mean, Lingering Souls in general is very good against uh, Junk Reanimator as long as they don't have Angel Serenity. Not only can you block, you know, whenever you're trying to, to race with, you know, other creatures, um, you know, because it generates so many bodies, but, you know, along with any sort of pump effect, like uh, Soren or what have you, Lingering Souls is just backbreaking in a lot of situations. Like that game right there, he had a bunch of 3 1 tokens. Very easily could have taken over the game should Evan have drawn a little bit more poorly or just made, you know, like one small mistake here or there. Right. Um, so, Robert, uh, he has um, Groupborn Defenses, Triumph of Ferocity, Tristani, Sundering Growth, Selesnia Charm, Abrupt Decay. And a pair of removal spells, O-Ring and Putrefy. Yeah, I think he's uh, probably going to be bringing in the Celestia Charms. Uh, it exiles two of the, the more powerful creatures in the matchup in both Thrag Tusk and Angel Serenity. And the fact that it exiles them means that there's no Embarerite shenanigans going on after that. Unfortunately, it does not keep them from coming into play the first time. So <laughs> or they're, leaving they're, play. Yeah, or leaving play. So he's still going to get, uh, you know, the sweet abilities. There's no ground seals. There's no way for him to keep Embarerites from being good. So, uh, yeah, maybe Evan will just... Take it on the back of a lack of uh, preparation from Robert. Yeah, this it's a really disappointing sideboard for this matchup. He has Selesnya charms. He can bring in some removal spells if that's the way he wants to go. But really, he he has almost no options available to him. Yeah, he can make like a, a marginal swap of like O-ring over Putrefy or like uh, a Putrefy over. Uh, I don't I don't even know. He he can't even make that many marginal swaps. It's it's tough. His, his deck's going to be mainly the same. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I saw him side in a few and side out a few, so I assume that just, like, three Celestine Charm came in. He might have sided out something uh, that was a little slower, uh, or maybe even, like, Voice of Resurgence, because it's not that great in these uh, green-on-green -green matchups. Um, you know, the, the times where Voice of Resurgence is good is going to be against the hyper-aggressive, uh, you know, decks like Naya Blitz, Mono Red Aggro, as well as the control decks uh, like Fan Flash and Esper Control. Uh, it's not great against the decks that play like Thrag Tusk. Not only are they very rarely casting spells in your turn, but, you know, a 4-4 creature token is not going to match up well against a Thrag Tusk, you know. I mean, if you're able to get it to a point where it's big enough to, to attack in combat, you know, it. who cares, I'll just chump block forever with these cards. Uh, Evan also has access to uh, Fiend Hunter, which is very good against both uh, the opposing uh, Advent of the Worm as well as Voice of Resurgence and his uh, subsequent token. Yeah, it's, it's so weird. A card like... The Voice of Resurgence. They so rarely make a card that is really good against both hyper aggressive decks and hyper controlling decks. It's, yeah. it's a it's, weird middle ground. Yeah. I, I, it's, I, I think it's rare. Like I don't, I can't think of one in, in at the moment that is good against both of those. And you know, it's it's right in the sweet spot because that's uh, one of the problems that a lot of the decks in the format have is that they're so geared towards beating one or the other that they often lack a good way to to beat the other one when they're paired against the wrong one. And Voice of Resurgence is a, a basically a split card. It's your opponent can't play counter spells and your opponent can't attack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, it's awesome. It's, yeah, it's, it's just sweet. a really well designed card, really powerful. Yeah, uh, there are some in. Uh, there are four uh, Voice of Resurgence in Evan's board. I don't think they're coming in. Uh, I directed him earlier in the day to not cite in Voice of Resurgence against the green based, you know, mid range decks and stuff like that. Uh, so hopefully he takes my advice to heart. So Evan's. Keeping his seven, looks like Robert is mulliganing to six. Evan's doing some ninja cuts. 
Top. Ninja Quest. Pow, pow, pow. Top four to the bottom. <laughs> Dude, those were going to be so good, too. Jesse is just <laughs> over here shaking his head. Oh, man. Right. I, I live for this. <laughs> oh, Robert. is Robert going to six? No, no I think he's five? Keeping. He was just okay. fixing his deck up. So, leading off with a Temple Garden. No Man Accelerator from Robert. Not that surprising, considering he's only playing four. Uh, but he could have a far seek to help ramp him into stuff. Looks like Evan's going to be starting off with an Arbor Elf. Perfect. He'll take two for that, but it's well worth it. Yep. Three mana on turn two for Evan Irwin. Mm -hmm. And yep, here comes a Farseek. Uh, FNM Farseek has been very popular today. Uh, that's basically the only one I've seen for people, I think, other than maybe Chihoyim, which he, he was playing just like the uh, ones from M13. I, I, mean, I don't think I've that? seen any Ravnica ones. But was that April? Uh, it was recent. I don't know exactly which month it was. It might have been April or perhaps March. Uh, Evan drawing. I think he actually has multiple mana accelerators in hand still, so he could just flood the board with uh, you know the cheap creatures here, which will allow him to accelerate into things like Acidic Slime, Thrag Tusk, and Angel of Serenity to start just taking over the game. Um, you know, in a matchup where your opponent doesn't have a whole lot of removal or the removal is slow, you know the one mana accelerators are basically just one mana far seeks. And when one person has far seek and the other person has a bunch of mana creatures, uh, the person who has mana creatures is likely going to be ahead as long as the other person doesn't have some big blowout card. Uh, like profit loss or anything like that and obviously from the deck list that Robert has he doesn't have anything like that right and you know Evan can just like you said flood it and even if Evan doesn't have anything to do with it those far seats you know those one mana far seats can still attack even it's yeah 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 still a reasonable clock agreed so access to potential four mana here but I think his hand is just three Thrag Tusk and a land so yeah. Uh, not something that Evan's really afraid of actually uh, one of the the key factors in uh, the uh, you know, junk mirror matches that I was trying to tell Evan is that uh, that's strange. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I don't mean to get off topic. Uh, one thing I told him is that Thrag Tusk isn't that good in these matchups because the games go like very long and, and the life is mostly irrelevant. What your main focus should be is uh, Acidic Slimes and Angel Serenity. Right. Um, this Obsidot is a little out of place. Um, I guess he felt like he had a few extra cards to side out and didn't know really what to uh, side in instead. Um, but, I mean, it's understandable, but it's going to look real bad against Thrag Tusk X3. Yeah, it does. Robert goes up to 22 here. And really, Evan just needs to find uh, something to go over the top, either a Thrag Tusk of, of his own, ideally an Angel of Serenity. Yeah. Angel of Serenity wouldn't be at its best at this point, though. Um, like, you really want your opponent to have more creatures in play, maybe play Lingering Souls. I think the best draw here would be Acidic Slime to start... Uh, not only taking care of the lands from the opponent, but to just get rid of that Gavney Township, which could end up being a problem in the later turns of the game. Well, he's going to Fiend Hunter a Thrag Tusk. I don't think this is going to end very well. <laughs> However, uh, Robert only has a few ways to deal with it in uh, 3 Putrefy, and unless he brought in some Abrupt Decays, which I don't think he did. Uh, so hopefully, you know, nothing bad happens. I feel like he's just going to battle for 5. Start putting some pressure on Robert. Not a bad play by any means, but it's always dangerous to Fiend Hunter a creature with a great come to play effect. It is, yeah. Although, really, Evan doesn't care that much about the life total. He's, he's more concerned with uh, the resources. Right. right. Looks like Evan didn't take my advice to heart. He has a Thrag Tusk in hand, and he just milled over another one. <laughs> and Sin Collector. Well, at least he hit a land and an Umbero right off the mulch, so that's good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Lots, is lots of value. And it's actually strange, like normally Thrag Tusk isn't that good in these matchups, but since Robert has three of them, uh, you know, now Evan has access to two of his own to really, uh, you know, battle back and forth with Robert in, in, in that Thrag Tusk fight. Yeah. And Obsidot comes, or rather leaves, it'll come back during the next upkeep. Right. Funny, uh, a new ruling for Obsidot or cards that, you know, uh, specifically, like, exile themselves and then come back into play at other points. Uh, you know, if you miss the trigger from Obsidot, it's not exiled forever. And it used to be like that, where it would just stay exiled forever. Now, Obsidot will re-trigger at the beginning of every upkeep, so if you accidentally forget it one time, you know, you'll get it again the next turn. So it doesn't stay gone forever. Uh, that was I thought that was a positive change. Uh, you know, for the rules, just because it's such a feel bad moment when you forget an Obsidot right. trigger and then it just stays gone forever. So, good change. But Evan still had a very healthy life total and about to cast some Thrag Tusks. So, another Unburialize for Evan, so it's looking good. Wow, so, on one side we have the Thrag Tusk plus the Unburials, on the other side we have the Thrag Tusk plus the Township. Yeah. 
Township might end up being a factor. Is that one about to attack with a fiend hunter here? I don't, <laughs> this seems ill-advised. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure what he could hope to accomplish there. I mean, maybe he wants to embarrass his fiend hunter after combat, but that I don't think that <laughs> does what you think it does. No, it looks like he was thinking about sending only the fiend hunter in, though. <laughs> it's, it's actually pretty interesting. There you go. All right, so now he's not. Now he knows not to attack with the fiend hunter. I think he was confused for a moment because now it was over there. Um, yeah, so since he has the embarrass. Not a bad attack here with Obsidot. You're more than happy to trade off that Thrag Tusk, and then you can just start either changing your own, uh, or you know just unbearize the Obsidot if you want to. So there it is. There's the block. So Robert will get another beast, and we'll see if Evan slams a Tusk or reanimates Obsidot. Yeah, he does have the option to reanimate Sin Collector if he's afraid of something big from uh, Robert, but. Honestly, if he had Advent of the Worm, he would have cast on turn four. Uh, or, you know, it's not actually even that relevant just because he has so many Thrag Tusks. Right, you know? the only non-creatures, or rather the only instants or sorceries that he might be worried about, um, a removal spell, but he doesn't even have an angel yet. So yeah, and to be fair, to I think Putrefy on Fiend Hunter would have happened long ago yeah. if, if he had it, like, at a point where Sin Collector could actually deal with it. Uh, looks like Robert drew Voice of Resurgence. Doesn't look too happy with his position here. I don't blame him because there is a Thrag Tusking Yard and a couple of Embarrowites and not a whole lot else uh, on his side of the board other than just Thrag Tusking Voice. So. Yeah, probably really kicking himself for not including some kind of graveyard. Hey, even only a couple slots could have yep. done it. Agreed. Uh, looks like he's going to cast Voice of Resurgence and Thrag Tusk, put a bunch of uh, things onto the board to gum it up a little bit. It's going to be a slugfest. Oh, yeah. Tusk number three up to 19. Yep. And after Evan gets done, it's going to be Tusk number four, five, potentially <laughs> six, seven, eight. So. so, this is one of the things I actually disliked about Standard for a long time was these Thrag Tusk battles. Until I realized that it's not Thrag Tusk that's the problem; it's Angel Serenity, and you know cards like that. That um, it's things that are unfair in certain matchups. Like Thrag Tusk, sure, it's like very good against Mono Red, but against like Control decks, it's you can deal with it. And It's, it's just a guy. It's yeah, a, it's it's a should, five mana sorcery speed guy. It doesn't yeah. do that much. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it's, it's expensive. Uh, it leaves a body behind if you Supreme Verdict, but it's just a 3-3 that it leaves behind. And um, I think a lot of the Control decks have adapted themselves to be able to just handle situations that involve uh, you know that so they've had to yeah you know at first I really didn't like the standard metagame when RTR came out but the more I play it and the I more did. I watch it I won the first event it was well, great I mean, Terminus was the stone cold man. yeah that was that was a sweet deck I was yeah. actually doing coverage of that of that tournament that was cool. a fun one to watch yeah I uh, beat Joe Bernal in the semifinals by oh, miracling somehow. miracling the the nut angel uh, entreat the angels on the exact turn that I needed to it was quite good all right, so Evan here opts to cast a Fiend Hunter, and I believe he can still flashback an Unbearer Ride, so this is perfectly acceptable. Um, it's likely, yeah, he's going to take care of that Voice of Resurgence, so there's no chance of a big elemental token coming his way anytime soon. Again, more than happy to trade off this uh, Obzidoc. Um, one thing I would like him to, to really grasp, though, is that uh, Thrag Tusk in this situation is just better because after the Unbearer Ride, it leaves behind a 3-3, three -three, right. whereas he keeps bringing back Obzidoc, and draining him for two, where Robert's already gained 15 life, you know? Like, he's, it's going to be really hard for him to deal that last, like, 15 points of damage with just Obzidot. And if he was just getting back Thrag Tusk, he could match card for card on the beast tokens that were still left in play. Yeah, this this is going to be really hard for Evan, uh, with Robert having the township. All of a sudden, those beasts are going to be 4-4, four, 5-5. Four, five, five, yep. and, and then... he blinks out his Obzidot here, which I also disagree with, because having a 5-5 five, five to block 4-4s four, is better than draining for two, I think. Uh, I mean, maybe he's just trying to put himself in a position where a top deck Angel Serenity ends the game on the spot because Robert's at such a low life total. I mean, that's a possibility. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I, I really don't like the blink because now Robert can attack with impunity, pump up his guys. Evan takes 12. Yep. Down I mean, nine. he's still at 9. Um, and he has the potential to block with... Uh, you know, one of the Fiend Hunters that has the Voice Resurgence, potentially a mana guy if he draws a land, so he still keeps himself uh, with the ability to cast uh, Angel Serenity. But he really needs appeal here. Thrag Tusk should help. It can trade off with one of the beasts. Um, and, he, you know, he's, he's going up to 11, putting Robert to 13. He's able to attack for 7, you know, putting him down to 6. Oh, oh. How, how fortunate to... <laughs> how for, what a fortuitous endeavor we have entered upon. You are Evan Irwin's good luck charm today. Yeah. Well, you know, 
He lost to uh, Ben Hexproof off camera in one of the feature matches uh, in round two and was complaining about it for, for about <laughs> three hours. Uh, but yeah, watching him peel Angel Serenity, uh, not bad. Not bad, not bad, not right. bad. All and right. We, uh, we get to blink Obzid out again. And now he looks like a genius again for blinking the Obzid out. <laughs> so, not, yeah, it's, it's funny. I keep looking like a fool. Who's got the chips? Yeah. That's the question. So, Robert has a Garrick that doesn't do anything. Yeah, he's dead on board. Yes. He's at six. You know, he could minus three and draw zero cards and see what happens. Uh, <laughs> see if he peels into any kind of two mana wrath. Yep. Are we, uh, yep. All right. So, you go to four. I have this five power flyer that you don't have an answer to. It might have Celestia Charm, you know. Yeah, might, might not attack because it's Celestia Charm. <laughs> might live in fear. Oh, there they go. Oof. Bold move, Cotton. <laughs> Evan doesn't even wait. He just extends the hand. He says, I know you're dead. Just, just no, I more. think the guy said good game. Uh, yeah. Evan's not the kind of guy to just put his hand in your face <laughs> and be like, is that good enough? <laughs> yeah. 